Thank you, Christian. His album, uh, that was Beautiful the title Christian. track of his latest album, Home. Christian Ebner will be with us all night. This is uh, Heaven and Hell, uh, representing Heaven, Don Piper. <laughs> representing <laughs> Hell, uh, Reverend Howard Storm. And uh, it's just fun to say Reverend Storm is representing Hell. That's just kind of interesting. And if you just tuned in, uh, pay attention. Um, Reverend Howard Storm, you're right. Uh, you were an agnostic. You an were atheist. an atheist. atheist yeah. What's the difference again? I didn't believe in God. I, I um, thought anybody that believed in God was an idiot. Okay. Uh, look into the well, camera and uh, and nice. and t talk to the people that are watching right now that think we're all idiots. <laughs> talk to them. Not How did you used to think? Talk to them. I, um, any of you that don't believe in God, I just want you to know that I love you. Um, a lot of people here tonight love you. God loves you. Yes. And... Um, we're not going to hold it against you that you're ignorant. Um, you don't know what you don't know. Yeah. And I was a college professor. I was an arrogant son of a gun, to yeah. put it mildly. Yeah. Um, if you want a tough crowd to evangelize, go try and evangelize uh, on the college uh, campus. campus. Mm -hmm. But I had believed that man was the measure of all things. And brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you that if you don't believe in God, that doesn't mean you don't have a God. You've got a God. And your God is you. You think you're God. And you've got the puniest, most worthless God there is. Wow. Yourself, brother. And it's about time you got straightened out. <laughs> <laughs> there is. Okay. There is a higher power. Go ahead. There's a higher power. Good. And that's what we're here to talk about tonight. Okay, let me clarify one thing. You're not mad at me, right? <laughs> no. You're, you're, I'm, I'm, I'm saying one of the good guys. Love. I'm saying that out yeah. of love. I am. Okay. I, I would go out and I would go out. I'd give my life for my brothers and sisters if they could come to know how good God is. Okay. But you were just like them. The, the, yeah. the skeptic that is yeah. out there viewing... They've lost their mind completely. Uh, there is no afterlife. There is no out-of-body experiences. I'm you, sorry. you were an educated college professor, and then what happened to University you? University of California, Berkeley, my alma mater. Oh, Come on now. <laughs> what, what happened to you? All of a sudden, you uh, saw what? At the age what? of 38 years old, I knew everything. I knew what was right. I knew it was true, and I had um, a medical emergency. I had perforation of the du um, duodenum. I had a hole in my stomach. Yeah. And uh, I was wondering what a do bottom was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said do bottom. <laughs> okay. Anyway. And um, sort of to cut to the chase, um, I was looking at my body. People um, were calling me outside the room, and I went to them, and they said that I had to go with them, and. The room was security because my uh, wife was there and my body was there and my roommate was there. Okay, wait. But Somebody said to you, like a like an angel, said you got to go with us. They weren't. They weren't no angels. Okay, okay. so oh, I got but you. Go ahead. I'm but, I, but I was thinking. I kept saying to myself, "This is crazy. I don't believe in this. It can't be happening. This I doesn't happen. This can't be real." Except that I knew that it was the realest thing I was experiencing. It's actually, it's hyper-reality. I know it's hard to explain, but yeah. it was more real than this is real. And they were saying, come with us, hurry up, we know you. And they took me on a very long journey into an ever-increasing closeness and darkness. Wow. And then um, I'm getting, like, really scared. And finally I said, I'm not going with you any further. And with that, they turned on me, and we began to fight. Now, if they had, there were a lot of them, hundreds, thousands, I don't know. If they had wanted to annihilate me, I mean, it would have been over in a few minutes, but that is not their interest. Hmm. What they want is torment. torment. They want pain because they are so devoid of love, so devoid of hope, so devoid of good. There is, there's nothing left in them except pain, hmm. their pain, and they want to inflict that pain on others. And so um, I got to participate in their... Um, festival of pain 
And um, I cannot talk about what they did because they are exquisite at debasing, tormenting, demeaning, and destroying you. And, I, and the physical pain does not begin to measure up to the psychological, emotional pain. Wow. Of tearing down every ounce of ego and pride and hope that you have. And um, this, when people talk about hell, hell isn't like this or that. If you had a thousand books of a thousand pages describing hell, it would only touch the surface of all the exquisite torments of hell. You mentioned Dante earlier. That it's but a tiny glimpse of what hell is. You know, people say, well, in your experience, you were in darkness and torment and stuff like that. And I said, yeah, that's an aspect of hell. This is, this, for every type of alienation from God, for every type of hatred of God, for every type of rejection of God, um, in whatever form that takes, there's a hell wow. for that. Wow. And there are, if you, I hate the expression, but kindred spirits, they're waiting for you, inviting you, taking you. Instead of the angels meeting people in a world of light and all that loveliness, there's people of darkness waiting for you to take you to be part of their world. Okay, hold that thought. What did you see, Don? Well, I was driving along in, an, uh, in a car on my way to church. Um, and I didn't make it. I was crossing a highway in the middle of nowhere. And the moment the, stru the truck struck me, an 18-wheeler across the center stripe hit me head on. I was killed instantly. And uh, I was immediately standing in, uh, in brilliance, uh, incredible light. And I was surrounded by people I had known and loved in life. People had preceded me in death. And uh, they were awesome. They were beautiful in every way. I mean, some of these people, I had, the last time I'd seen them, they'd been in a casket. They didn't look good. Uh, and yet when I saw them in heaven, they looked good. If you want to look good in heaven, <laughs> you look good in heaven. And they were spectacular in every way. Uh, they were all followers uh, of Christ. They had declared that to me. They were all perfect, without spot, without blemish, without age. There's no age because there's no birth and death in heaven. You're eternal, so people are ageless. And, uh, and then the thing they had in common, which really kind of blew me away, something I really hadn't expected or ever hadn't even thought about, was the people who greeted me at the gates of heaven all helped me get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was surrounded by people Amen. who had, Amen. they they told me about Christ, they took me to church, but I didn't have any other way to go as a young boy. They uh, lived the Christian life in front of me, so I knew what one was. Yeah. The people who were there were not people I would have predicted to be there, but in retrospect, I know now why they were there. Wow. Whether they were 18 when they died, that particular 18-year-old took me to church when I was 15 and didn't have a driver's license. I mean, they all did something like that to help me get there, and they greeted me at the gates of heaven. They knew I was coming, and uh, people in heaven know who's on the way, and it was a spectacular reunion at the gates mm. of heaven. So everything about your experience was love. Everything oh. about your experience was completely all the good stuff. There's one thing that's exactly like the experience that uh, that Howard just described, and that it, it's indescribable. Yeah. There are no yeah. earthly words to describe right. the majesty and the glory and the beauty and the love of heaven, or the brilliance of heaven. Yeah. Uh, we would be blinded by it with earthly eyes, uh, because in heaven God is light, and Jesus becomes the lamp of God rather than the lamb of God like he is here on earth. So we're dazzled by their brilliance. There is no need for a sun or moon in heaven. They illuminate the place with their glory. Right. And so you would be blinded by that. It, it yeah. is the most real thing I've yeah. ever experienced, but it is indescribable. Yeah. There are no words to describe how awesome it is. Let me give you the opportunity. Uh, there could be someone that has said, okay, over the last 10 minutes or so, uh, both of you guys have completely lost it. You're making this up. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is this is just what Don you first. What do you say to people that are checking this program out, but think that both of you are totally making that up? Well, I would say uh, a statistic. Now you say a statistic on a show like this. Yeah, here's a statistic for you. The death rate here on Earth is 100 percent. Mm. And we're not getting <laughs> out of this alive. Very okay? accurate. We're not getting out of this alive. 100%. And, and even, even at its most, it's not going to last but, but 70, 80 years, maybe 90, maybe 100. So you know there's got to be something better than this, and I have good news. There is. Yeah. And you can go there. There is a way prepared.